So welcome to um, this episode of Adam Answers. Um, for this um, episode, I'm going to um, read a comment that was posted on a YouTube video um, from a person with the handle of Prophet of Psych. Um, and the question is, how do I go about helping a client who visualizes or gets stuck on an ideal or unreal goal? Where we as the therapist also know that, is, that it is not a SMART goal. And SMART is an acronym. Um, it's S-M-A-R-T. And it stands for a specific, measurable, attainable, time-relevant goal. Right? So that SMART goal doesn't mean it's a good goal or a bad goal. It just means it's not specific or measurable or time-constrained. And so the, the question really is getting at... What happens if when I say, what is your best hopes, the client says something that seems really unattainable, or we can't narrow it down to how do we know if that's achievable? And in some sense, I guess I have two parts of the answer. The first part is, um, this isn't a goal-oriented approach. And that might sound strange because this is one of the evolutions of, so of solution-focused brief therapy. When it was originally created by Steve DeShazer and Insu Kim Berg, it was very goal-directed, right? I would listen to what the client said, I would ask them what they needed to do in order to take the first steps to achieving their goal. And so it was a very goal-driven approach. But as the approach evolved a bit, instead of being goal-oriented, we are now outcome-oriented. And that's a really important distinction that helps to answer this question. Because in some sense, when somebody says something that seems on the surface to be outlandish, right? Um, Elliot was doing a therapy with a, with a client one time, and it was a teenage boy. And he said, what are your best hopes? And the teenage boy said, I want to be a rapper. I want to be a football star. And I want to get my mom out of the house that she currently lives in, right? And on the surface, when you talk to a teenager, those seem like outlandish goals, right? How could you possibly have time in a lifetime to be a rapper and a professional football player, right? If we just look at the logistics of that, it seems impossible. But because this approach has evolved and we're no longer goal-oriented, but now we're outcome-oriented, that allows Elliot to ask a really important question. And the question that he asked is, if you are able to do those three things, be a rapper, be a football star, and get your mom out of the house that she's currently in, what difference would that make to you? And he said, I would feel like I was doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right? I, and, and I'm gonna add a word here, he didn't say this, but in essence what he said is, I would be living within my purpose, right? Now, being purposeful, living within my purpose, <clears throat> that's now beyond a goal. <clears throat> That's now an outcome. It's a desired transformation. And so this approach is no longer goal-oriented, but it's outcome or transformation-oriented. And what that, that difference is really, really important because now when I'm talking about the transformation, I get to jump over how are you going to achieve that, and I get to say, okay, can you imagine for a second that that outcome has actually come about. It's present in your life. You're now living, doing what you're supposed to be doing. What are the signs that you would notice? What are the differences that you would see about your life? And he went on to talk about that he would be, he would be eating healthily, right? He would be exercising just right. He would be working hard enough to make his mom proud, right? And when we get to that place, then I can separate the goal of becoming a professional football player, becoming a rapper, from the outcome. And I can say something like, suppose tomorrow you wake up and you have that kind of happiness, right? You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're feeling like you're living that sense of purpose. But you're doing it even before you actually accomplish being a football player or being a rap star, right? What would let you know tomorrow that you had made that small shift 
and that you are now moving in that direction. And one of the things that he said when Elliot asked him a very similar question is he said, I guess I'd have to get myself back in the books, right? This kid wasn't doing very well in school. And Elliot said, well, why would you need to get yourself back in the books? And he said, because in order to play football, my grades have to be good enough in order to stay on the team, right? And he said, what difference would it make to you to be back in the books? And he said, well, my mom would have to talk to my teachers less. And would that be a good thing if your mom started talking to your teachers less, right? So when we separate the goal from a, an outcome or a transformation, then that transformation be, can become immediate. It's not, it's not time constrained. It's not what's, what do you need to do and how do you need to do it? But it's, it's something that could begin immediately. And so the second part of my answer is when we separate, when we are desired outcome focused or transformation focused instead of goal focused, those other pieces kind of fall into place. If we're looking for a smart goal, right? If we're looking for things that are specific, right? You heard in those answers, I need to get back in the books. What kind of things would you make sure to study? How much time do you think it would take for you to study in order to get good enough grades to be on the football team? So the specifics, the measurable, right? What kind of grades do you need? I need A's, I need B's, right? And if you were getting all A's and B's, what would that tell your coach about you? Right? So all of a sudden, those things that didn't look like they were smart goals, right? Becoming a rapper. When we say, what does the transformation look like? Measurable, attainable, specific details become part of the conversation. So I think it doesn't really do us much good to think about, is this an achievable goal or is this not an achievable goal? Because when we move to a desired transformation, then we start to notice that the differences can occur immediately. The last thing I wanna say about this is that just in pursuit of that thing that seems unachievable, might actually be enough, right? If this kid begins doing his homework, begins going to class, begins um, not fighting at school anymore to get in trouble, right? Begins listening to his mom, in all in pursuit of becoming a football player, a rapper, and to help his mom get, a better, get better housing, he's gonna become something along the way. He doesn't necessarily need to become a rapper. He doesn't necessarily need to become a, a football star, but just the pursuit of that will change who he is, right? He'll do better in school, which might maybe, might shift his attention to now I need to go to university. And maybe while he's in university, he finds a love for chemistry. So now he wants to become a chemist. It's not that we have to achieve the goal that they specifically stated but we have to describe what difference that would make, knowing that as they become that difference, they will become who they want to be. So this is an approach that is outcome-based more than it is goal-based. So the, the last thing I wanna say about this is one of the things that this shift help, this shift or evolution in solution-focused brief therapy helps us to understand is that we no longer need to debate with our clients. We no longer need to inadvertently argue with them and say, well, that's not really achievable, or let's bring that goal back to something that seems a little more attainable right now, right? We don't have to do that anymore because what we're describing is small details that help them to become. And it's the becoming that makes a difference not necessarily if they achieve that specific goal or not. So I'm really grateful for this question because I think it, it helps us to understand that if we focus on smart goals, we have to stay in the position of an expert to get all of this, is it measurable, is it attainable, is it within a certain, certain time frame? But if we switch to outcome-based therapy, what that means is we get to leave control over this process in the client's hands. They get to remain autonomous. And I think that's actually more powerful than pinning someone down to something that they may or may not achieve. Um, and instead, we get to help them to harness all of the power 
that comes from pursuing a transformation.